Hello everybody, welcome to CCL Season 50 first round match between Vela Hoppia and his human Bashius team versus Necronome and Necronomical Nurgle. In the booth with me is Fymir. Hello! Hello everybody, here we have a bear with, on paper a very good game, very good coaches and this one is dedicated to our viewer from Bulgaria Ooh. which is a yes, they, they speak Bulgarian there <laughs> And the national dish is this. Jesus. The Sopska salad. Mm. But the national flower are red roses. So, point to the Bulgarian, you know, gentlemen. Yeah, that's Good very taste. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't argue with that. <laughs> um, this is interesting, isn't it? This this is like crazy, but it's. I think humans are the favorite versus Nurgle, which seems wrong to say. <laughs> But um, the Nurgle have got really underdeveloped warriors, right? A block, a block claw mighty and two claw mighty. So like lacking block on two of the Nurgle warriors is really bad. Lacking guard on all of them. Um, so yeah, really underdeveloped warriors. Decent beast, uh, decent carrier. Um, meanwhile, Veli's team has got a full full tackle pommer there, bunch of guard, and uh, yeah, pretty pretty decent looking human team. Match up. Strength up, so yeah, n nice human team, bare bones, noble team. Yeah, those uh, mighty blow claw warriors look like a first week of Charlie's uh, qualification. <laughs> yeah, but they still they have the regen, they have you know all that power, all that strength, mm. so they could win. And they have the ball, which under the rain is a victory for Nargel. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the humans are a very decent team. Yeah, Lots really of tools nice. in the humans team. Really nice. Should have made it a 3D on the catcher. There you go. Patton, I haven't watched Patton. I only, I didn't know it existed, but I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not American, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Jack Bull said Patton was his favourite rom-com. <laughs> Wait, what? I mean, coming from Jack Bull doesn't surprise me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I would never put Patton as a rom-com uh, movie. <laughs> It is, it is for it is for America. It is for uh, Jack Ball. It's a it's a love affair with America. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this Vela Hoppy guy? Of course, J Five has heard of Vela Hoppy. Vela Hoppy is very good and has won Chalice before. So um, very good at the old blood balls. And yeah, almost like has the better team. Still needs to get some dice. <laughs> Yeah. Those pushes are not enough. No. I still early. And I think he has a very good position in here. I think they can get the Nargle team more or less under control. Yeah. It's interesting, isn't it? Because if, 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 if Necronome starts rolling well, things can go very badly still. Like, you know, although, yes, he's missing all that block, but he's still got a lot of claw mighties, hasn't he? And if they get in and, and start hitting, it can go bad. The thing is, he's, he's in offense here, so he can just go, like, base, 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 you know, with his uh, warriors. Yeah. He needs to be careful. He hasn't got guard, though. Like, if he just had one guard, he could have put the guard in there and that would have given two, D, two Ds, but instead he can't even... He's going to do a 1D here. If he, I think he will go for the 1D because it gives him the 2D after. 1D with a beast versus a block stand fair mogger. Oh, we'll do the, 1D with a, do the 1D with a rotter, right? And then that gives you the 2D from the beast. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. okay. Rerolls it, double skull, diced. There you go. <laughs> They don't forget that probably Necronome is uh, playing, watching the screen at the same time, looking over his shoulder, <laughs> just in case Elliot appears. Yeah, rookie error from Valley. You shouldn't, you shouldn't schedule Necronome at six p.m. You should schedule him at three a.m. and then he'll be terrified that he'll speak. <laughs> Elliot will get him. <laughs> 
Now, uh, Necronom is in trouble because the ogre can hit the beasts. Yeah. And the humans have a lot of uh, free players. Yeah. They've got loads of guard as well, haven't they? They've got, like, God, how yeah, they can Yeah, they can make a very good uh, wall. Yeah. Also, there is Omi. I mean, obviously, the pressure on the cage. He had like a three players on the right side that can just go through the cage. Yeah, big stun on the uh, rod. Unmodern. Unmodern. You know. Seeing whole things in America right now, let's put the civil war to rest for a while. <laughs> oh, glory is a good one, eh? Yeah, you're gonna get the blitz in. Wants to, wants to come back though, because like with the with these two stuns, he really does want to try and maneuver back in front of the. Uh, the majority of the Nurgle boys. We'll see how it goes, the Blitz. Yeah, four, five, six, seven, he'll get up and back. It's not terrible. You've got to do this before you do the uh, Ogre Raid. Gets him down, lack of block, telling. Oh, he piles. Mm, interesting. I wasn't expecting that. No, I expected him to run, run back. Yes, to run back. I like running back to here because you haven't got a lot down there. I mean, obviously, he's slow, and if he goes down there, he abandons these two, so it's. In a way, you want him to. Uh... And this might be a good like creating trap space, right? By uh, by panning rather than bringing him back, that does encourage uh, Necron or Mort to try and make the break down this side, which is going to end very very badly for him. But again, that is all he's got, so it's not really that much trap space, is it? Because it's like it's still terrible. Who's Dolph? Is that the tackle pummer? Yeah. That's the thing about trap space. Often the trap space is the only fucking space they've got and want, you know, like if yeah. he stays where he is, what's he gonna do? Just nothing. It sure looks like it, Dabuma, yeah. I mean the, the the human team is better than the Nurgle team, I I believe. If if Beli Hopea keeps managing keeping his players at a safe distance of just one square or two squares from the Nargel. Yeah. Nice. Like, Necrom's got to get really lucky. Like, obviously this team could get lucky. And he's he's got the three claw mighty, so he could get lucky. Or well, four claw mighty's total. So he could get lucky, but he's got to get lucky. Like, to, to yes. Uh, and the risk of one in nice. I mean... He only has two rerolls for the rest of the half. Yeah. Like, it, and how is he going to score? Like, it's it's he's in a really shitty situation right now. Really, really bad. Yeah, Dolph's, Dolph's quite smart, isn't he? He's got like a, he's got some kind of science degree, hasn't he? Yes, he has a PhD. Hmm. I have a story about uh, Dov Langren because he was living in Spain in Marbella. Oh, wow. Or some part of the south of Spain. And one night, some burglars break into his house. His <laughs> wife was still in the house, so they tied the wife to a chair. And hmm. when they were, you know, looking for things to steal from the house, so all the photos of Dov Langren, released it was Dov Langren's house, and out of pure fear, released the wife and just left. <laughs> 
amazing. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh my God, this Dov Langre house, we can eat. <laughs> it's time for Dov Langre. You know, sorry, lady, we made a mistake. Don't fuck it off. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Several degrees, huh? there you go. That is great. That was a big dodge there, wasn't it? Four plus dodge, cheeky. Yes. And now he gets all these stun guys back. But how is he going to score? Like, Because they come back turn five, and then like he's still not going to be crossing the halfway line unless he crosses without them anyway. So like, it's, he's in a pretty shitty situation. So like that trap space was maybe the right space even you know even though it was a trap and like it's funny that's the that's the thing i'm i'm re never that sure about trap space being a good thing <laughs> oh kevin jordan with a quote of that movie <laughs> oh yes yeah yeah that's an that's an amazing that clip isn't it oh my god that's so <laughs> just funny. in case you know we die <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, no, no, no. You've got the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. <laughs> I love what he says on a man as well. <laughs> you know, like, I've seen some horses, you're not that big. <laughs> but you've got the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. <laughs> I've been to the zoo, I've seen, I've seen an elephant cock. <laughs> I think now was gonna do Billy Hopea, what is the Blitz? I think it could be the Claw Mighty Warrior. Yeah, I think so. It's got and then move already. back the the bomber. Oh. I find it interesting that he has a thrower with accurate, but also as a guy with AG4 sure hands. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, that is a weird, a weird. I guess, I guess that helps the one, like the two turn, doesn't it? Because he gets to pick up with the short hands, and then accurate throw, like it helps with the two and three turn, I guess, getting it to this. And the leaper to four. recover the ball and all that. But... Yeah, edge four for like a normal. The edge four for a normal drive, and then the throw it just purely for a quick one. Well, hey. <laughs> If you need a quickie, you can use the thrower. Again, the lack of block. And again, piling on. Yeah, he loves the pylon, doesn't he? He's, they've got to be the bashiest team. They're not the bashiest team if you don't pile on every time. That's true, that's true. That's, you have a reputation to maintain. Yeah. And go the KO. And it's good as well, isn't it? The thing is, it's like, it's just so, the odds are so good, and it's like, you know, okay if you, you give up, you know, some position or whatever, but like, in you know, it's it's hard to know how much you're getting out of the continuous piling. Like, it's 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 pretty powerful to just keep piling out, and it really is. The odds are, are so good, and then, you know, I don't know, it's easy to sit there and say, like, oh, he's piling is giving away positioning or whatever, but then... It's also like just so good to remove like players, isn't it? Interesting, right? And I, I need I need to eat to be honest. You, you can hold the fort on your own for a bit, can't you, find me? Yes, yes, no problem uh, at all. Glorious can things. keep the, the the fort here. <laughs> Even I had a few pints and a couple of whiskeys with a friend that came from Spain. I'll do it. Now that is the interesting part because now Necronom is forced to advance. And that's not helping him much. And the problem here is now that the if the humans want to screen, they have more than enough players to screen. I'm just going to ignore chat right now.
and just focus on the game because Jesus Christ guys what's wrong with you Okay, that's more or less all right. Getting the blade there and then using the block tackle to close the door. For God's sake, Sega 6. Let's just, let's just imagine Sega 6 that that never happened. You can be a famous, you know, you can be a famous uh, Tomb Guardian, but that's not, uh, that doesn't give you a free card. Uh, so guys, I thought it was a replay, you know, I feel absolutely scam here. I think it's cool of bamboozle me to do a full game. And I'm not sure that player that is the right uh, choice. Yes, yes, the, the humans can screen easy. Also, it's not like, like they can screen, screen the front of the Nargel, they can also screen, uh, screen the side. So just caging. <laughs> exactly, the boomer. And there goes the ogre hit. I would have preferred the ogre hitting the beast because that will uh, free uh, the dirty player and the strength for a uh, dodge guard. I mean, the dodge guard is up already free, but he will be easier to go up. And there you go. But well, hitting the, the beast, I mean, yes, you get the both pushes, it's about the choice you're hitting with the ogre, but the ogre has block to die 75% of getting the knockdown. Yes, zero removals for the Nargel. They are not doing a good job killing people. Also because they didn't have that many chances to hit people. Oh, nice dodge there. And here we are, turn six. Right, hello. I've got I've got my dinner. I'm just eating it. So I'll, I'll be back in a bit. Good. But I can, I can control the camera-ish. But I'll 
Outcomes Don't worry, nothing, ha nothing has moved much. <laughs> the humans that went to do the screen mm. at the front of the side. So, I think now for Nurgle the chance is to hit the lineman behind the AG4, trying to get some space. For trying to go for the giving the dodge two heads one, you know, enough chances to be able to move. Well, it's basically over the uh, J5, but there's still turns to go. And Jim, we know what Jim is eating. It's rice, chicken, and broccoli, probably. That's exactly correct, yep. <laughs> yes, there you go. We are months of our habits. Exactly correct. Ah, there you go. He goes for the player I said. Armor break. Something. Yes, the models, uh, the fact that yes, and looking the way you finish the movement, it's always funny. Cauliflower instead of broccoli, there you go, eh? living on the edge. You know you can chop out some pepper, green pepper or red pepper, and add it to the rice meal while it gets, gets made. I mean, yes, uh, the dodge two heads can just push. But I think he wants to prevent, the, avoid doing that. And so he should at least move that player at least one square higher. So it's uh, two GFIs to score. Oh yes, he can just roll six J5. Yes, of course. I mean, fives will do the job. Oh, there you go. Uh, no, I don't play in CCL. It's not my kind of thing because I'm a very casual player. I don't have that much time free and having to invest the amount of hours needed to even dream of qualifying will make it uh, nearly impossible. That's why I prefer to talk about Blood Bowl and watch it than play it. That's true, yes, yes, more or less, yes, that is true. Sorry, but I played with Blood Bowl. I, there is a YouTube game where I beat uh, Jimmy Fantastic and I was playing Canberra. Well, I, ha I have the Spanish radio voice because I'm from Spain. Yes, I played every single game in my mind, you know, that's why I can really play so good. Well, he lost versus Canberra, you know, he was playing Chaos with a Minotaur. Jimmy is mostly famous for making a, a Norse win chalice. I want to find everyone who plays Norse in real life and just beat them to within an inch of their fucking life. <laughs> I, well, I think, yeah, that's more or less it. Ah, this is so easy to scream for the humans. They can get the nargle so much trouble. 
Oh, bl block accurate, coming here. Oh, nice. Getting the chain. And the ball is base. And you know all of what that means. GG, congratulations, Belly Hopea, for reaching the round of 35, uh, 32. Okay, that's much better. <laughs> He's uh, blocking the score uh, with a classic line of bodies. But the problem here I see is like the ball carrier can blitz the accurate the block follow and then just dodge away and score I mean that will keep give the the humans two turns to score but it's really easy I think that the tackle uh, piece <sighs> from the humans that's not the right square for the guard the uh, tackle no it should be you need someone here Yes, yes, Ziggy, one yeah, square, that, that's, that, that's the square, because I was saying, yeah, now the two heads can just blotch through. Yeah, yeah, he's got he's got a blitz with this guy, hasn't he? This guy has to blitz him so we can push him up there, and then he just goes through on a three. Yeah, yeah, there we go, he's, he's got that, yeah, yeah. But then he's got this as well, right? He's got this, the warrior, the noble warrior, but then I guess the strength four and guard, so it's not so easy for him to, to do anything, but yeah, yeah. Let's see, four, five, and he's five. So yeah, player in. I, maybe you could like do some kind of chain. You could blitz this guy and then chain him to there. Maybe that's yeah, better now. That he's, yeah, yeah, chain that's better, it. Yeah, it? with a blitzing with a warrior, getting the chain. Yeah, that's probably the best. Yeah, he chains him, and then oh, and then he could chain. This guy who could then could he chain something clever? Maybe not. I guess you just chain him with time, and then you've got a three, three, two to score. Yeah, that's the place, and it just just chain him. Do the Nurgle have any reserves? That's a good question. No. <laughs> Yeah, Pedro Jack, and you know it very well as a coach that reached the run of 32. I saw yeah, it's weird that Nargel with only 11 men. Wait, I think Necronom time. just stopped playing because he just discovered that he qualified by chance. What? What's he doing? Still has two turns, so he can go to the. Oh, it's turn seven. Middle. Oh, fuck it's me, it's turn seven. seven. Yeah, all the math. Yeah, sorry, you re you reach at the point of the conversation where you you miss the part when I say if he wants to score, giving the humans two turns. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just I thought it was turn eight. Oh yeah. No, so was, he can just definitely. move to the right and cage again, and even one square higher. Yeah. So you can get him there, and him there, and him at the back. But it's a bit shit because he's got a base cage, hasn't he? I guess there's no tackle around to hit him apart from here. Who he's very much in range of right now. I guess he should have moved this guy first. Yeah. So then he could have now was the guy to. Now it's a double GFI instead of a single. You can tag him there, or there, whatever. But this guy's got a double GFI now, too. The misordering.
But yeah, he definitely didn't want to score turn seven because it's just too easy. For, even even against Nurgle, it's too easy for humans to score in two, I think. Yeah, but the Alpha is not looking like he's going to have many chances to do it then, you know, turn eight because... All this movement is very nice, but I think the humans can still have a good chance of doing a good screen. Yeah, I think if you haven't moved this guy there, then the score doesn't look... It looks a lot better, doesn't it? Oh, here we go. Oh, well, we're all time. Wee. Okay, well, uh... So now you can power him, get into assist there, power him, get an assist on the ball, and then just 2D him with tackle. Simple. I wonder if you can even counter score the edge four, maybe. Yeah, yeah. The edge four is in range, so. Whew. Boy, howdy. That's good enough. Mm. Oh, no, 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 he needed the power. Yeah, so he doesn't follow because then he can get this catcher down. He, 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 this is good enough, right, for... Uh, he just needs two assists on, on this hit so he can get in somebody to assist the hit on the ball. So, like, this guy can go three and then this guy can come in there and then if he pals in then this this strength four can come in with guard to there and then he can blitz him and then he'll still have the thrower left and the catcher to catch it like it's greedy but it's doable <laughs> greedy banger Vela Hoppia <laughs> well if he manages it properly, he doesn't need the sure hands to pick up the ball because Nargel won't be able to score anyway. Actually, to be fair, you don't, probably don't even want the guard in there. Probably just want him here so you can blitz him to there. Just like a better place to blitz. Yep, yep, so that's what he's doing. So you go, GFI. Happy days. Here he comes. Mashy steam. Ooh. Gets the pal. Oh, beautiful roll into double pals. Pile on, instant. Love to see it. Yes, because you don't want to pick up the ball for the scat. And gets the cas as well. There you go, look. Go on, oh. always pile on. Gets the region. Oh, but region works. Oh, well, that is awkward. <laughs> That's like one of the worst possible scatter, isn't it? Apart from like I think that that was the worst. It. Yeah, apart from one of them catching that. That's the worst possible scatter here, yeah, for sure. Now you've probably just got to stand in the way. I guess, I guess you just put both of these on there. Yes. I mean... Just uh, cover the, the rotor, which is the obvious uh, scoring thread. Yeah. Tag, the the water is already tagged, so... Yeah, go far and then put the side stuff in there, yeah. Yeah. I wondered if he was going to go like here and here or here and here. You could even have him in the middle, but I think you probably just want him in, in on the ball. Yeah. And now if... Sorted. Well, he has the two dice with the ogre. Hit. On the rudder. Yeah. Oh, he does this. Okay, so he's gone. He's, he's getting the scoring threat in. Wow. I wonder if that's worth it. Obviously, he thinks it is. I wonder if it actually is. 
Maybe, because he's got the tackle blitz to blitz anyway, and this guy, I guess, isn't doing a lot. So, yeah, that's a, a decent shot from Veli. Very greedy, but, you know, like, not really greedy. Like, it's, you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. it's good assessment to realise he's actually not doing, he's not actually contributing much here. So, you might as well give yourself the chance to get lucky. So, I guess this is one of the situations where if he gets lucky, it's because he was good. Um, so there you the go. problem now is the tackle. Uh, this man can blitz the side stepper, the E4, and then it's a dodge from the rotor. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. To be fair, the other argument is it's also a bit of a canoring threat because he could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then so tagging the tackler from behind would be really good, wouldn't it? Actually, so, so. It's not that obvious that this was a good move <laughs> anymore. Now it is a bit greedy because, yeah, having him here would be amazing. Yes, Ducky, yes. <laughs> a little bit. And hello, Saturday. Gets the pal. Get the pal. The Will be this the only mistake that more or less Billy Hope have done uh, the whole half that makes oh that's a nice uh, side yeah, step. That's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. Adding another dodge for the rotor. This isn't easy, is it? Three, three. Oh, the forks is raining, so three, four. Three, two, two. Oh yeah, you could no, no. One, two, three, four, five. Two. No, no, the rocks are worried as well. And there is the roll. Double one. Dies it. Oof. And now comes the it's scoring a play by the humans. Yeah. Because there is the Surhan's accurate thrower. Yeah. Yep, yeah, he's right there. So I guess he can do he could dodge. He could just blitz with this guy, but then he can't hit the right angle to get him. But I guess you just blitz with this guy to see if see what happens. Or maybe you could block with him, but you can't get the assist. And then if he, but if he gets him, then one, two, three, four. Four, he could pass from here. One, two, three, four. He could pass from here. Oh, he's not passing with him. Interesting. I don't know, I, mean, I quite like it. The thing about the thing, the same thing is, if he goes one, two, three, four, he's still got to pass it from here, hasn't he? So I'm not sure which is better. I guess he is edge four with shoe hands, which is better. But then he's passing from here to here, and I guess yeah, the accurate is the same. But you just have pass. Is it worth not having pass for the ability? But to you do pick up one? the ball easier. Yeah, you got plus one for the pick up. Is that is the is the plus one on the pick up worth losing the reroll for the pass? Because they're both definitely passing it from the same square. Well, it's, it, he has a reroll anyway. He's done eight. And the player catching the ball is a catcher. Yeah, yeah. So, He's yeah. Got, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely correct to do on the catcher, yeah. Correct. And he fails to pick up. Jesus Christ, fucking disgusting. The thrower uh, says, look, okay. sh I wanted to pick it up, you bastard. <laughs> ah, there you go, the ball. See, see, the game, the game tells you what to do. <laughs> so, a very good half of Veli there, wasn't it? It's taken no damage versus the Claw Mighty. Move two. Just a shitty rotter, but he's got a warrior down. Down nine players. Necronomus is looking really, really looking bad. Looking bad, really, really bad. Yes. Really bad. 
I mean, Necronom has a tall order anyway. Even if they are similar TV, just because all the blood that the, the Nargle has make the human team much better. Yeah, yeah, the human team is so much better than the Nargle. Okay, Nargle God, I'm so tired again today. This is this is terrible. I don't know why. I don't know why. Oh no, I do know why. I only had like four hours sleep. <laughs> oh well. Uh... It's not a snack or anything. No, it's uh, strepsils. Yeah, see, Steve knows. <laughs> I would never have candy. Really? Not even a Mars bar? No. Not even a deep fried Mars bar. Never had them, me either. <laughs> and I know I live at the place where they're famous from. But sometimes meaning you can do something doesn't mean you have to do it. Yeah. This is not a setup to protect yourself from the blitz, but because it's Nargle, they're so slow, it's mm. fine. Yeah. <laughs> right. with block mm. also doesn't look like he's going to blitz oh wait I stand corrected hey. pylon do it, yes. 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 What a, what a tease, what a tease not doing it instantly. Got a pile on. Always pile on. Grace. I might take a second pile on for, for my game versus PC, you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> pile on versus four of always works. Yep, Much it's... better than guard, everybody knows that. Well, he's already got guard, so like, I feel oh, that's like... that's all right then, you already have one guard. Mm. Well, you know, I could take stand firm, which is probably not going to be useful because if I get I'll, if I get hit, I'll get powered and cast. I could give him tackle for the game against Rick afterwards. That seems a bit pointless. I could get dauntless for the game against Rick afterwards, but then it obviously does nothing against PC. Whereas if I take piling on, I've got two piling on guys against an eleven man team, and okay, they're armed nine with thick skull, but still, they're still. Ah, okay, okay. Team. Now I now I see the points. So you can get the. Double disappointment when uh, none of the pylons work. Exactly. Exactly. I win that game or, by winning the toss, receiving, casting two dwarves, turn one. That's it. That's how I that's, win the that, game. That's, that's, yeah, that, that's the plan. That's a good plan. In mm. fact, two dwarves is too little. You should go for four dwarves. <laughs> the three on the lowest and the blitz. Yeah, I think I think two is more realistic. I think I could win if I'm if I cast two dwarves on turn one. I think I could win. So I should probably take the skills that give us the best chance of doing that. I, I think I'm not. I'm not even joking. I am thinking about taking the second, the second pile on <laughs> for dwarves. As stupid as it sounds. 
Well, the next game is versus uh, uh, Lizards. If uh, the result of the other game is a victory of uh, Rick, which we don't know, you need you have to watch that game on the YouTube. Yep, correct. You want to know what happened? And having uh, two pylons in a team with skins could be very really useful. Yeah. Exactly, Ducky. Five with the throne rock. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, I have, I have had white tricks before, yeah. Very, very rarely. I had, I had some for my birthday. I probably won't get any more until my next birthday. <laughs> Hundred percent dedicated. Hundred percent. Hell first. Mm. And now Necronom is in the classic situation of what the hell I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> yeah. I mean he can go base 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 because the humans have enough guard to just hit everything with two dice. Mm -hmm. Oh, dodge foul, love it. Oh. Lundgren, Dickie. Dickie's disappointed. That's why I said Dickie, because I was trying to say disappointed at the same time as Ducky. Ducky disappointed that Dolph isn't dead. Oh, the boomer, so you're not really in the need of one. You just gave up, eh? Just chomping blocks of butter, waiting for the inevitable end. <laughs> chomping blocks of butter. Yes. Yes, I thought, you know, what could be worse than, you know, these Americans that you see, you know, fat Americans eating blocks of cheese and making it British. Obviously, <laughs> blocks of butter. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Fun fact about the uh, eating butter uh, like it is, I went once, once to a, a party, a Latvian party. And they have, you know, there was a dance and all that. I had friends that were obviously they are Latvians, so that was, I was there. And dance and all that, and then for the food, you know, chicken, blah, blah, all kind of food. And very, very decorated uh, stuff that looked like cheese. You know, and they were cut and decorated, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have one. I put one in my mouth, and they're like, fucking hell, it's butter. <laughs> Who the fuck decorates the butter? They actually, you know, like looking like a swan and all that kind of stuff, you know, or cutting like in shapes and all that, it's like butter. I thought it was cheese. <laughs> Obviously, I sold it on and ate it. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, 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 was, uh, yes. Everybody, you know, was looking at me, what the guy is doing? Like, was the problem here just having... Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> two kilos of weight. I mean, two kilos of weight is, is ludicrous, isn't it? Like, it's nothing. Yeah, this guy, the boomer, is... Uh, I'm liking here uh, him less and less. <laughs> but like now, it's it's now, just stupid now. because like two kilo like you know you can't like two kilos is like in the range of it could be your weight or whatever as well anyway couldn't it rather than like it's not yes it could be that's... water it could be you having go to the bathroom for the for a day two kilos is in the absolutely normal uh, thing yeah in fact if you wait yourself as soon as you get out of bed, and one hour after getting out of bed, you'll see a big difference of in, uh, in weight. Yeah. Two kilos is a big... I think <laughs> that would be a really big... To, to be honest, I, I find that wees weigh more than poos. Uh, that's what I've found in my experience. I've, uh... So there you go. <laughs> I feel like a... I feel like a 4.4 pound poo would be a very hefty poo, Kalon. <laughs> I have to say, I have to say that I know people able to do that. <laughs> you know, just give them an amount of effort, a free buffet and a few hours time. <laughs> You'd see a poo after a meal of butter. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, beard. No, I just, I just think, like, we's just, like, because there's a lot of water in them, isn't there? Like, potentially. And, like, w like it's pretty heavy. Like, you know, if you, like, you know, if you think, like, a, a bottle of, like, Coca-Cola or whatever, you know, like, they're kind of, it's pretty heavy, isn't it? Well, it depends on how many bottles you can fill per day. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> there, there is a challenge for chat. Uh... <laughs> You can share your bottles in the uh, in a uh, uh, regressless uh, uh, Jesus, well, Discord channel. Uh, Discord channel, you know. <laughs> that was a rowdy apple, yeah. Really rowdy. Oh, Van Damme's gone. No more splits for him. Is Necronom going to turn this around randomly? Maybe. Just with the power of dice. Mm. Does the foul on Dolph again? He might turn uh, it around. Yeah. As I'm just waiting for the J5 story. He has been <laughs> quiet for a while. And we're talking about the massive sheets and uh, all that. So I'm waiting for him. Yeah. He's been in the military. He has seen things. <laughs> This is funny, this looked horrendous for Econo. Yeah, but, uh... yes. Hello? Hello, Skuro, you're back. Yeah, I am. I just heard something about massive shits and wanted to be a part of it. <laughs> yes, yes. We... <laughs> it started with you know, uh, uh, me saying people eating blocks of butter. <laughs> Block butter, eh? Mm, a very you interesting... Know, like the... The big, the big blocks of cheese that were fat the American people eat in the photos. <laughs> like already giving up on life. What what British photos people, are you looking at in which Americans are eating blocks of cheese? Well, the, the ones that are 25 and are already using a, one of these wee motorbikes to be able to move themselves. Mm. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> You, you also, know. it's cheese product, not cheese in America. We don't make cheese in most of America, unless it's Vermont, in which case cheese. it's real cheese. <laughs> cheese! <laughs> well, we're, about, we're on the poop weight thing for North Korea again, I see. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was just randomly. Uh, Dabuma said he was two kilos overweight, and it's like two, kilos, two kilos nothing, and then Kilo's like, that's just like a poo, and it's like, I don't know, two kilos is a pretty fucking big poo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mobility uh, scooters is, is indeed what you meant. Uh, that's only four mobility five scooters, pounds. Yes. Uh, mobility scooters. Yeah, four and a half pounds. Yeah, two kilos. Four yeah, and a half that's, pounds. That's nice. Yes. That's I nice. was a scuro, I was talking about the thing. the people that appear in the Walmart photos. Like oh, the the Walmart. For, okay, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> again, kind of, again, again much kind of like American. much like American cheese is cheese product. Walmart people are like people product they're not they're not you know, quite <laughs> human eating eating the whole block of a uh, cheese product sorry of a cheese you know because mm. yeah. like, you know, sorry you know, I, I don't know what weighs more poo or burgers but if you think it weighs the same as a burger then that would be 18 burgers wouldn't it which is which is a lot <laughs> I mean, it depends on it depends on where you're buying your burgers. There's a place, Fuddruckers in America, which does like one pound burgers, which is fucking absurd. Wow. Yeah. Okay. You imagine just? I mean, everyone could probably imagine eating an entire pound of hamburger, but it is r ridiculous. The only time I've even tried was in college on a dare, and I got like halfway into it. <laughs> Wait, on a date? Yeah, they're fucking gross. It's fucking gross, but. On a date, you took a date to it. One pound burgers. <laughs> yeah, White Castle, but White Castles are like, I mean, they're like fucking skin cells of meat. <laughs> like, they're just <laughs> shaved so thin, there's probably nothing to them other than the bun. The bun's probably the 90% of the calories. The bun's all the thing, always the thing that gets people, I think, and you know, all these eating challenges, things like breakfasts or burgers yeah. or whatever. It's, it's all, always, always the like bread, the stuff. Bread. Yeah, the, yeah, for sure. Or the chips or, you know, all that kind of stuff. All it takes is space. Mm. Ha <laughs> ha. 
absolutely nothing happening. <laughs> like absolutely zero interest in this Blood Bowl game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then it's the, going, uh, it's going the, slow. It's going slow, but it's going more or less. Billy Hilbert's uh, way. Hmm. I think the most impressive eating thing I have ever done is that I consumed sixty-four uh, uh, oysters in in one evening. And we were doing a we were doing we were doing a dollar pub crawl of oysters because uh, in the oysters are very cheap here, and like all the bars do like dollar oysters in the summer here. So we oh did a pub God. crawl. Of dollar oysters, and I ended up eating sixty-four of them over the course of the night. And I, um, I was basically like sweating seawater at that point. It was fucking disgusting. You were one step closer to become finally go to your jellyfish form. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, the thing is, it wasn't even like filling because you know they're fucking oysters. They're not super filling or anything. But like by the end of the night, I was just like, I feel like I've got about four pounds of semen in my stomach right now. <laughs> Uh, that's, it was just that's, that's, it was uh, rough. so specific you know, that, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I mean I will speak no more as to the comparison but uh, yeah oh god so, so there yeah, was, yeah, we've all one been there like, one dollar oysters in the summer what a thing you know a very bad image there no, they're super fresh. I mean, that's the thing is like, like they're literally caught ten miles away. Like they're like as fresh and as perfect and delicious as you can. But uh, they do one dollar oysters, so you come in and spend fourteen dollars on a cocktail with it. Ah, uh, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, no, it's very class. It's actually high class. Like it's high, it's high class stuff. It's not like gas station sushi or something like that. Oh my god. High class. <laughs> you know, to the sign of. One dollar oysters. Oh, come on here, darling. This yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which probably means there are no. 50 cents oyster bars or 10 cents oyster bars. I would not do that in any place outside of New England and even parts of New England that are like landlocked, like Vermont. Like you wouldn't want dollar oysters, but like anywhere along the eastern seaboard, you're going to get fresh seafood. That's pretty good. And like the best oysters in the world are caught like within a mile or within an hour of my house. So. But all of a sudden, Veli's in trouble here. Like he's lost his two best blitzers, and it's nine aside. And Necronom's defending very deep and and well, isn't he? So this is very tricky for. Tricky, tricky, tricky for Veli. <laughs> Well, I'm more interested in the part that I took a date to the place with, you know, with one pound burgers. <laughs> so with one with one pound burgers? I that 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 I wouldn't. Oh oh oh, Fuddruckers. Yeah yeah yeah. It's uh, they're awful. They're fucking disgusting. Yes, but you were there on a date, so you took a girl. There, there, a dare. not a date, not a date, oh, a dare, a dare. A dare. A dare. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh it was a call. It was it was in college. We went. And we're like, who wants to try and eat a, a, an entire one pound burger? I was like, fuck it, I'll do it. And I did not come close. Not not a date. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, well, I can excuse you mistaking that for like a twenty year old American's idea of a good date. That's, that's I mean... not the case. <laughs> Uh, my wife would probably enjoy going to Fuddruckers for one for one pound burgers to get sick off of though. But... <laughs> yeah, a pound a pound burger would be a lot, wouldn't it? It'd be like well, it'd be exactly like four quarter pounders, wouldn't it? Which would be a lot. My my first date with my wife was a picnic in a graveyard because that's how we do it. Mm. Oh my god! You know what's what, the worst part of that? That's not what's the it? first time I hear that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really? Going on a picnic in the graveyard, yes. It's because great, my man. Friend, graveyards my are friend awesome. that uh, is here with his wife and uh, daughter, they went on a few tours around Edinburgh, you know, the ghost tour and all that. And the yeah, guy yeah. with the ghost tour tell them because Edinburgh is full of uh, graveyards. Mm -hmm. And people go there some picnics, and my pal asked me, so this thing about going picnics in graveyards? And I told him, no one I know will ever go to a picnic in a graveyard. <laughs> well, now, that's not true. <laughs> now I have to text him to text him. Sorry, I <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, Excuse man, not me. only that, but it worked, and we ended up getting married a decade later. What do you know? See, you know, see, I have to explain that it is where people that goes for one dollar oysters and one pound burgers, <laughs> you know, go for dates. <laughs> and yes, he's uh, looking better for the Nargle. Yeah. They're managing to hold the line. Yeah. Yeah, it did, it did a few turns ago, then he? he? got these two big removals, which helped a lot, and like, you know, equal equal numbers, and he, I think he's defended quite well as Necronome, so yeah, this is... Uh... Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we have in the high jump competition, Johnny Five, coming to overcome a Skuro picnic in the graveyard with 10 years of suffering chilies, just to make a joke after 10 I mean, years. That's, that's pretty bad. Chili's is Chili's is pretty much the lowest of the low in terms of American chain dining. <laughs> that isn't like straight up fast food, I suppose. <laughs> the lowest of the low. <laughs> well, I have to say, you know, when you say the lowest of the low and it's Chili's, I didn't even, I didn't even knew the name of the chain. Nah, yeah, it's just like TGI Fridays or any of those other like American pub, you know, get burgers or chicken fingers and like a watered down Budweiser. Fucking garbage. <laughs> garbage. Oh, man. I went I went full Boston again, didn't I? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's great when you go full Boston. <laughs> but you can tell how disgusted I am with something when I go full Boston. <laughs> <laughs> fucking garbage. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, for 10 years, that was the anniversary dinner for J5. <laughs> wicked easy. It's wicked hard. Oh, man. I mean, in fairness, that, that beer, Satterfield, Sam Adams, is like the Applebee's of Boston craft beer. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? And, like, that's the thing. You say what you will about the whole Boston Irish thing. It's like, our fucks become facts pretty fucking quick. <laughs> oh, interesting you went for this blitz. I thought he went for a 1D blitz on the old guy. I would have gone for the uh, 2D on this guy because you got the tackler here, right? This tackler could have uh, blitzed, blitzed this blitz. That's what the blitz I would have done. Personally, I think it was a mistake to not do that. Personally, Cheesecake but. Factory, famous for having a salad on their menu that's like 1,700 calories. <laughs> not bad, not bad. <laughs> it's fucking awful, man. <laughs> well, if you, want, if you want to dip your uh, cheese block, you know? <laughs> maybe what he was going to do was, if he got the POW, the 1D POW, maybe his plan was to move the... Beast on the ball, the beast could have then gone like one, two, three, four, GFI, GFI, and beast the ball. But... You add, you add water, bang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ali, oh, you know everything you need to know about Boston, then. <laughs> you got it, you've got it all down. <laughs> Wicked smack. <laughs> Bass. Yeah, I don't know where the wicked thing comes from. I always thought that was how it was said in the UK too, like how it was used, but it's not. <laughs> so I don't really get it. <laughs> Fighter, oh jeez. Yeah, let's see. I've seen a few Boston movies. Yeah, they film. They film. I mean, there's a lot of movies that are filmed in Boston that uh, that are not necessarily in Boston. Uh, Knives Out was filmed all around where I grew up, which was pretty funny. So it was like this big chase scene at the end of Knives Out. And I'm like, ah, oh, I used to ride my bike around over there. That's pretty cool. Mm. And uh, what was it? The last season of uh, the new season, the New Blood, Dexter New Blood. They, my, that was my high school <laughs> that they used. <laughs> pretty cool. See, look, look which was cool. Which was cool to see like a there. fucking gory ass wood chipper spraying blood. <laughs> In the front of your high school. <laughs> and he goes for the ogre. What's what the GFI the Tiger Warrior? Or double uh, GFI the Tiger Battle Warrior. 
Yeah, double GFI. I like that. I like that move a lot. See, but look how much better it would have been if he'd had that. I think the tackle blitz on this guy was definitely 100% the play. Now it's looking pretty shitty for Necro. That one maybe he's wrong blitz has maybe he's cost him the whole defence. Some of those were in Evanston, right? J5? The mansion or whatever, like some of the mansions that they used there were in like North Chicago, Evanston. But how many Mighty Mighty Boston songs have you heard, Alley Rider? <laughs> Got to get that sky in. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Oh, well, I need all oh, big, really stupid. Hello, Walid. <clears throat> what are you having for dinner? Is it a one pound burger <laughs> from Fuddruckers? <laughs> You know, if it was only the meat, that's yeah. easy to do. Well, that and was the thing. That was actually what caught me off because I was like, "Oh yeah, one pound of meat. Like that's not that bad. Like like uh, oh, if someone challenged you to eat a one pound steak, you'd be like, I I could do that. But then you forget how much cheese, mayo, onions, lettuce, tomato, and then their buns are fucking huge. Like it's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> Ooh, samosas. I don't know what's that, but sounds fantastic. Like also, Indian... the, fact, the fact that you you have a wife puts you ahead of the line on this chat. <laughs> well, I'm married. And J5 too. Yeah. I never said that being ahead of the line of this chat was a good thing, Skuru. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not actually a big fan of the drop kicks. I think they they're kind of the like cash in on the uh, like you know, for all the things Kalon was ranting about uh yesterday. I feel like the mighty mighty Boston's are like excuse me, the uh the drop kick Murphys are like the quintessential fake ass punk ass Boston Irish poser bands like. <laughs> I really like Flogging Molly. They're not low. They're from LA, but they're a good band. Oh, Rocky Morphys did that song for that movie with a... Uh, I know. I haven't heard that song every fucking other day of my life. <laughs> the last, since whenever the fucking Leo DiCaprio movie came out. Yes, well, mate, I come from the country of the Macarena. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I love Flag Molly. I've seen Flag Molly a couple times live. They're great. I think I've seen are. the Dropkicks. Yeah, and they're not great. I think this is a mistake from Necronom here. I think, like, you know, doubling the org is okay, and, like, maybe he can dodge here and 2D him, but, like, I think he had to double G if I tag this guy and then tag this guy so everything would be tagged. But, um, or, you know, okay, well, even if he's tagging him, then I still think he could have tagged the other one as well. Gonna get his tackler surfed. Mmm, I might get him surfed. Yes, he's going that dodge. Oh, I guess that that dodge is okay. That can solve some things. Roll no dice. Don't even play. <sighs> Most discipline you can have. Man, this dog walk I took was the first time I'd walked all three of them on my own. I must look like a fucking maniac. <laughs> <laughs> three crazy ass wolves chained to me, walking through this suburban little uh, neighborhood that doesn't even have sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So like we have to like walk in front of cars and shit. <laughs> No, no, I didn't have to protect myself, Ali. I was good. <laughs> Getting ready for the uh, Mad Max environment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Maul said, I just need a fucking chariot to attach them to for the Fury Road. 
Oh, baby. You'll be, you'll be like Grom the Paunch. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> Hey, none, none taken. You're gonna be fatter than me soon. <laughs> Why, he's, it's because he has a chariot pulled by wolves. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. <laughs> I got it, and I appreciate it. I got nothing against Grom the Pond. <laughs> Glorious. It's actually three as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's three. Yep. So it's it's actually perfect. Well, one of them is very small still, Willie. It's, uh, she can't pull much. All she can do is almost trip me every other fucking step I take. Oh, he doesn't but go Cody, the crazy one, got really pissed off at a dog he saw, and he grabbed her leash and yanked her, and she went flying like four feet off the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me, Willie. Yeah. This and they're all like... And they're crazy, too. They look like this. This is going to be a ridiculous link, but I don't really care to fix it. <laughs> now nah, he didn't come across any 14 does the leap. He does the leap and the dodge. What a loony. Is he just, he, he, well, he, he's got a score, hasn't he? I, I think punching him was better, because he could have punched him and then... You know, he could have punched him and he'd have been safe, but instead he goes in early. Well, the, the Nurgle 2 turn is kind of a guarantee, so it looks like we're getting overtime, especially in the Nurgle 2 turn in the rain. <laughs> yep, the old 8-man Nurgle 2 turn. It is, I mean, it is pretty safe, but I don't know, there's a, there's a bunch of dice, I guess, I guess to be fair, rolling the dice yourself is better than giving him the chance to roll them with a reroll. It's fair. To be fair, probably. Tamaskan. Yeah, they're fucking cool, aren't they? They are pretty cool. <laughs> Everyone's eating butter. <laughs> Love them. Sometimes it's really crazy, though, when you're like, you know, you think about it, you're like, okay, I know a cookie is bad for me and I shouldn't eat a cookie, but, like, whatever, it's just a cookie. It's not a big deal. Then you're like, I'm going to make cookies. Let me look up a recipe, and it's like, all right, to make 12 cookies, i got to use two sticks of fucking butter. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, howdy. Boy, howdy, indeed. Uh, only ten humans. Yeah, only ten humans. So there was only, uh, both teams were only eleven. So yeah, it could have, he could have easily high rolled. Actually, he couldn't he necro with all this claw mighty. He could have easily high rolled. But, uh, it's like a eat it like a popsicle, the boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Three wolves versus four. four you know, they, you definitely know. Uh, I, four, I, I would take my. I, yeah, I take my dogs against four aggressive fourteen-year-olds any fucking day of the week. Yeah, You'd you need can like give a them knives team. too. It's still... You'd need like a football team of over fourteen-year-olds yeah. to, <laughs> to even think about making that match up. And, and humans have an inbuilt reaction to be afraid of a dog that's baring its teeth at them. Like they don't even have to do anything, and the, most humans wouldn't approach a, a, an actively aggressive dog. Yeah, yeah. Well, they've got teeth, haven't they? <laughs> you know, and, and again, I, I think I've told this story before, but Cody once got in a fight with a, with a woodchuck, uh, like a 30-pound woodchuck, a huge animal. And those things are like, they can put up a fight. They could, they could kill a smaller dog. And I watched it sink its teeth into him, and I thought he was done for. Didn't even penetrate his coat. Like, his, they're, like double-haired dogs, like sled dogs, have like a coat of armor on from their fur. He didn't even get uh, broken skin from the bite. It was incredible. He, and they killed the thing in front of me, and it was less incredible, but it's still <laughs> impressive. A woodchuck. Oh, is that the thing from Groundhog Day? A woodchuck? Uh, yeah, well, no, Groundhog Day is a groundhog, not a woodchuck. But Are they different? They're they look, slightly they different, I think. Similar. But yeah, they're similar. And they might even be the same thing. They might be the same thing. I don't actually know. But they can get big. They're kind of like badgers, right? Like, they can, like you look at them, you're like, oh, that's not a threatening animal. But then you're like, oh, a badger could absolutely fuck something up if it wanted to. Mm, okay. 
Is it, a, it is the same thing? Yeah, that might just be a regional thing then, whether mm -hmm. they call it a woodchuck or a groundhog. It's like a weird rat. It's a marmot, rat. I think. It's like a type of marmot. It's not a not a rodent. It's like a it's like a rat beaver. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Badger hybrid. <laughs> but they have but they have they have sharp claws that they can grip with. They don't like fight with them, but they can grip with them. And then they have very big teeth because you know they fucking chew wood and, and whatnot. Mm. Yeah, badgers don't fuck around. I don't think we get like the badgers that you guys get in the wild here. But you guys don't have skunks, and you're fucking better for it. Yeah. Oh yes. Skunks. I'm My dogs still if smell Necronome like skunks. Realize that he can have three players on the side. <laughs> yeah, he will. I mean, he will because he can't end his turn until he does. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I don't fancy his chances. There's two turns to be fair in the rain with, with, with only two pesticles. It's it's looking yeah. rough, isn't it? Hardly any yeah. players. I would I would probably just put the beast on all three of the line and have no one else on the line, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, what, what's the beast gonna do movement four, especially spread out at all? Like he's not You gotta sink everyone onto one side of the field here, don't you? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I'd probably go not the strength five stand firm guy side <laughs> either. Ah, but then he's got the small players that side. But yeah, so yeah, stick the beast so he's occupying all those. And then yeah. blitz the blitzer with uh, the maybe, tackle. Maybe he's thinking about blitzing with the beast into the thrower so that he can get the tackler on tentacles. Maybe. And then just base the ogre and potato. Then he can't get down the side, though, can he? So maybe he's just well, he can. There's, he's, the side isn't guarded. Yeah, but I mean, if he, if he doesn't blitz the ogre, he just doesn't get enough support, does he, down the side? That's the problem. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's a potato at that point, but he's going to rely on tentacles on... Technically, he could put tentacles on the catcher and the thrower if he gets the armor break. Or, excuse me, the catcher and the blitzer if he gets the armor break on the thrower with a GFI, right? So he hits the thrower, yeah. waits to see if he breaks armor, and then he GFIs over. Or he could just blitz with somebody else and then just move the uh, yeah. thing on the Yeah, actually, yeah, that is that is better, yeah. Yeah, interesting. He could have actually blitzed the catcher, right? And then if he powered, then uh, yeah. he could have gone straight through. Might have been an idea. Yeah. Yeah, I think this. I think this is, is his best shot, but it's probably not going to be enough. Oh, oh god, he goes in there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm really. I'm yeah. so tired. I had four hours. Yeah, this sleep. is what I was thinking with the GFI to save the player, but this is safer, obviously. Yeah, and he can tag the ogre, but yeah, it's pretty much a potato. Yeah, because he can't. But the thing is, he can't stop the strength four. But the strength four has a double GFI to get to the sideline, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of interesting, Kill. Hmm. I guess it would have been better to have gone the other side, and then he could have uh, he could have used the beast. Oh no, because there's the three guys. He wouldn't have been able to put in the beast to tag them. Yeah, so he's he's going this to go the opposite side of the three linemen. So is he not going to tag the ogre here? Oh no, he's got another warrior to, or yeah, the good. actually the the Rotter. rotter can tag the ogre. He's not going to be able to pick the ball up. This is going to be his big problem. <laughs> Well, he has your hands and a dream. Yeah. Yeah, because he's just got to go for it, eh? Do the handoff as well, probably this turn, maybe even. Yeah, I think I think so. But, like, if he did that, where's the ball? I feel like it's backwards, right? Like, the ball wants to be where the currently activated Beastman is. The, the tackler up top. 
Uh, or the block tackler that is. Yeah, I just wondered if he goes in, doesn't hand off. Where does he go? You know, like it's. it's yeah. It's rough, isn't it? You know. I think I w I think I would just try and get the ball in the hands of the claw, the claw mighty this turn, and see if I can tie the game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There we go. I don't know he's gonna do it next turn. Yeah, he's gonna do it next turn. I think it, I think the ball could technically get flooded and screened off here, couldn't it? Yeah, this is the problem with not going for it this turn. Yeah. This is gonna be very easy to put a lot of pressure on the ball. But I guess the thing is, if you do put pressure on the ball, then you're leaving yourself exposed, and he hasn't got a tackler to hit him. So yeah, yeah this is maybe a good idea. And he can clear that warrior to hit the ball here. Oh no, he picked it up. Yeah, he can hit the ball. Clears the warrior and then the strength four in, right? Yeah. With no tackle, right? So if you hit the ball, you're not yeah. hitting one of the receiving threats. So it's it's not bad to leave this on as a as maybe he's a bit of a trap lit in that he can't he can't hit everything, can he? So yeah, it's not terrible. Yeah, imagine if this was uh, the new new edition of Blood Bowl. They'll hope you have four re rolls. <laughs> Just get get at it, baby. Yeah, you go. Does it go for the ball? Oh my god! <laughs> would, would that have been worth your reroll? Yeah, maybe. I guess maybe. I mean, having four. Yeah, you got four. You got four, and it's to win. I mean, not to win the game, but to greatly increase your chances of winning the game. Isn't he? Because if he had the ball, he would have probably re-rolled that, like, you know, if it was to score himself or whatever. Mm -hmm. So maybe he should have re-rolled it. Yeah, he's still got two, technically two scoring threats, right? Two. Mm. But then, of course, him having the other scoring yeah. threat makes it less desirable to re-roll that, seeing as even if you do kill him, you still have another throw this turn. Anyway. Tell me there's a chance. I mean, a really good chance, isn't it? He just dodges. He probably blitzes. should. Yeah, he probably shouldn't throw this ogre block. No. So it's three, no two D, then two two, three four. It's not terrible. Ah, oh, there we go. This 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 makes it a lot better. You have to do a five plus three plus here, and then blitz through the catcher and pray. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty rubbish. How's that butter treating you, uh, Famir? You sucking it down? <laughs> oh yes, <yeah>, feeling good. <laughs> Well, here we are, turn 16, for Negronom, we're going to extra time. Yeah, well, you got to get the ball in his hands first, Luke. Can GFI handoff can't he to him, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he so, can, yeah. but still yeah. five plus, right? 
Yeah, dodge blitz. And then you can... Uh, it's, it's, it's hard. Uh, I guess if you get that guy down, you can yeah. go through that kind of hole that exists there. But Yes, yeah, the weak diagonal. Yeah. But it's a 1D blitz, isn't it? Which, no, no, he's strength 2. Yeah, it's okay. Because I was thinking he's got defended by guard both ways. Yeah. He's only strength 2, so... And even if strength three, you've got the assist anyway. So just being a bit... Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that's got to be the best play. Yeah. And you could do these blocks afterwards. So... These blocks, maybe I wouldn't even do because you could fuck yourself. No, uh, I guess not. Yeah, I guess it doesn't change anything actually. So it doesn't change anything. Why do them? You know, you're losing one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also that. Also that, but. <laughs> yeah, Corpax. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you gotta do. Yeah, you gotta do a three plus blit, a dodge blitz here. Two mm. D, and then eat. Yeah. In fact, I think it was worse doing the hit. I'll tell you why. Because if you dodge and blitz him this way, then he, you push him to there. You could have had another hit at him, right? To try and yeah. power him. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Very good point. Because now he's got a dodge and hit from here, and if it's a push, it's going to be mm -hmm. a bit shit. I mean, he can hit him down. He can hit him from in front of the ball receiver. Yeah, but it still doesn't matter, right? It's right, still right, right, right. It the same matter. thing. He's got to get the power to make this reasonable. Yeah, it doesn't matter where, where you, if you put him here or here, or here or here, it's still pretty yeah. shit. Just run down the clock to 15 seconds and uh, yeah. do the plane. Call it no, a day, no. easy win. This was uh, very optimistic. Yeah. I don't really know what that's helping him do. Now he has to do a 5-plus handoff. Yeah. And he... Only has one square of lateral movement for the two GFI score, so that that was not the card to play. Ooh, that's not what you want. Nope. And that's it. And that's it. That's it. Uh... Yeah, I think that was a bit of a. I think that was a bit of a mistake. Yeah. But you know, it was, it was a tough match anyway. Yeah. So you know, it, it didn't. Like, yeah, it wouldn't. Have, I don't think it would have ended up either way. But I think the three plus two D blitz would have yeah. had slightly better chance at it. But yeah, I think I think he played well up against it and, uh, yeah. and defended yeah. really well. So yeah, commiserations, Decorum. Congratulations, Vela Hoppier. Thank you very much, Fimea and Skuro. It was great having you guys on as always. Oh, Absolutely, a Necronome. Here. Necronome can enjoy his one-pound burger at Fuddruckers as his consolation and his, prize. Uh, blocks of butter going with it. <laughs> and a big thanks to all our uh, viewers from Bulgaria. Course, I yeah. hope you enjoy the match and the chat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and stay fantastic. You can be my wingman.